Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 752. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 740 to 752, click on the link below the video and scroll down to the Excel Magic Tricks and download this workbook. Hey, we got a great example here. We have some company names, and we need to do, in essence, a lookup and say, is there's lots of text here, but we need to take only part of it, that Century 21, and say, is it in this list? If it is, I want to list just Century 21. So for example, this entry here would get this. This entry right here would get this. That's nothing, so it's going to get, it's not one of our matched values, so it gets independent. Uh, Remax, there's Remax preferred property, so that would get a Remax. So, so the problem here is if we're doing some sort of lookup, we have a bunch of text here, and we need to look through a list of values and, in essence, do an approximate uh, a lookup. No problem. We're going to start with the inside of this formula. We're going to look at the search function. The search function can take an individual piece of text. So, for example, if it's looking through here and I say, hey, find what? An R. Within this, it'll say 1, 2. It'll give me the second position. Two. Now if I copy this down one, you can see it gives me a 5 because it's the fifth. Now that's not exactly what we're going to be doing in this video, uh, in this formula here, but we will use the search. Now think about this. What are we looking for? I'm actually going to create this down here because it makes more sense if we have a, a match because we do have a match there against that. Equals search. Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for one of these two values right here. The independent will never get a, a, a match, so we're going to add that in later with an if. I'm going to hit the F4 key. Now think about this. We're going to look for one of two things. The problem is this argument, find text, is expecting a single text string, either a single letter or you know a bunch of letters. Here we gave it one. Two. As soon as you do that, which means we give it two text strings into an argument that's expecting a single one, you've entered the realm of array formulas. So, uh, but no problem. This function will handle it just fine. So we're going to look for one of those two values, comma within what? I'm right here, so I'm going to click there. Now the funny thing about this construction here is it will always return an array of numbers. It's either going to get a match here which in this case it'll it'll return a 1 because it's the uh, finding it in the first position or it, this array will be a value error because it can't find Remax. I'm going to hit F9 so you see it's always going to return an array of values. Control Z. I actually want to enter this and copy it a few down. It's going to give us value errors because it's an array and we didn't enter it but I want to look right here. How about right here? I want to evaluate. I want to highlight and hit F9. Notice we're getting a 1 because it's starting in the first position. Escape and then F9 here. Value, value because there's nothing. Here we should get F9 a 7. Ah, because it starts in the seventh position. But you get the idea. We're always getting a number or value error or two value errors. Escape. And finally this one if I hit F9. Ah, we get a value error and a 1. Now I want to take this array here and convert it to only a 1 or less than 1. And the way I'm going to do that, escape, is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to divide by 1. Now what this is going to do, I'm going to copy this down, is it will always give us here, it'll just, there'll be two value errors. Here there will be uh, 1 divided by 7. F9. So we get a number less than 1 or value in here, we should get a 1. So we're, we're always going to get a number 1 or less. Now we can use this. This array right here is in essence going to be the trigger, I'm going to hit F9, to tell us which one of these items we need. And we're going to use this array inside of the lookup function um, because the lookup function can handle array. So I'm going to come up here. Now what do we have to look up? Lookup, by the way, does uh, approximate matches, approximate lookups by default. So if I say always look up one comma, it's going to either find a one or a number less than one, which is a perfect. That's how approximate look, uh, approximate lookup works. So it'll always find the number, whether it's here or here. Now. Lookup is also great for this particular solution because lookup vector, that tells us where in the array to take a value. 
comma, and then the results vector is what? This right here, because that's what we're trying to return, f4. So again, we look up 1. We're going to get always a value 1 or less, either here or here. That will tell us the, the logical position to go, and it will get the values from here. Enter. You don't even have to do Control Enter, because Lookup can handle arrays. Now I'm going to copy it up, and then copy it down. The NAs are for the independent. And you can see we get exactly what we want anytime it sees a Century 21, whether wherever it is. By the way, we could, uh, you know, I don't think we have one of these, but if it was in the middle, it works just fine also. So we see one in the Century 21 in the middle, at the end, at the beginning. Now, NA is great in this situation. I'm first going to show you a solution in 2003 or earlier, and then I'm going to show you a much better solution for 2007 or later using the if error. But no problem. Anytime this is a, I'm going to copy that. Anytime this is a is NA, that's a logical formula that gives you true or false. Well, what do we want? Well, that's going to give us true or false all the way down, right? Well, what do we want? We've got to put this inside of an if. So if, now there's our logical test, true or false. Well, if it is an error, I'm going to type comma, the value of true is what? Boom, independent. And then F4 to lock that. Comma, otherwise, what if it's false? We need to run this a second time. And thus, uh, before Excel 2007, this is very common type of formula, but it means you have to run the uh, whole formula twice. So for a big data set, it can be a hassle. Double click and send it down. Sure enough, it looks like it works just perfect for our approximate lookup. Now, in 2007 and 10, we have this great new function, if error. And what's great about it is the value, you just control V. And then if it comes out to an error, you just say what it is, independent. Is that amazing? No running it twice, no is an A. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. All right, um, that was a little bit about uh, some trickery with search and lookup. And by the way, the first time I ever saw a construction that uses lookup and search to do an approximate lookup like this was Barry Houdini's formula in the 2008 Mr. Excel message board challenge. Totally awesome formula. We also saw a little bit about uh, if error, lovely new function in 2007. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.